Hey everybody, Supervisor James Gore here. We're gonna talk about homelessness. Three different items, Skid Row, uh, Los Gilicos, and a request for proposals that's out on the street. Um, so the first thing is, is that on Martin Luther King weekend, I had a chance to go down and visit a county supervisor who represents the Skid Row area. I got a chance to see firsthand what it's like, what are the homeless encampments that are there on the streets right below multi-billion dollar skyscrapers. I tell you folks, uh, it's a great reminder that there's urban, rural, and suburban issues with homelessness and housing throughout our state. It ranks as the number one issue on voters' minds, on citizens' minds, uh, because in many ways it's, it's become more apparent, it's become more transparent. Uh, the more we try to address this issue and bring it into the light, the more people want it to go back into the dark sometimes or back where they don't have to address it. So um, we can't do that. This is too big of an issue. A full quarter of the nation's homelessness is in uh, California and uh, in Sonoma County, we have one of the highest rates for a county of our size in the nation, even though we've reduced that number by 40% over the last uh, five years. So more work to be done. So uh, the Board of Supervisors, we held an emergency meeting, another emergency meeting uh, a week ago, and we identified a site, which is called uh, our Los Gilicos site, it's colloquially used. It's where the uh, Valley of the Moon's Children's Center is. It's out in Sonoma Valley. Um, all of these sites that have come up for us for short term three to six month review of how long we're gonna be able to keep people in an indoor outdoor shelter and get them into transitional housing. All of these sites come up with significant concerns from neighbors, from community members, and everybody else who don't want, sometimes they'll go so far as saying, I don't want those people around me. Uh, but the reality is, is that there's a lot of germane and very real uh, concerns that are out there as well. We know that shelters bring with them uh, a completely different uh, flow, a completely different uh, attitude, and a completely different uh, uh, population that's around the area. So we have to be held accountable from a county side uh, to manage security, to manage access, to manage uh, lockdown hours. All of the things that work in shelters and our tried and true best management practices, not what some people think of as just taking care of an encampment, which is letting people squat and do whatever they want. That is not what's gonna happen at Los Gilicos. Uh, our folks have already worked on the Joe Redota Trail to identify at least 48 high priority needs people. Uh, think to yourself, maybe a woman who's been abused, uh, somebody else who's gone through trauma, who's really looking for a place to get their feet set and is ready to move into the system of transitional and ultimately permanent supportive housing. Those are the folks that we wanna get in with right away. Uh, when we open up this indoor-outdoor shelter in the next week to two weeks, uh, we're going to be moving people from not just the Joe Redota Trail, but allowing other people to apply to be a part of it. Uh, for those who decide not to go in, those who are out there camped on the either the Joe Redota Trail or somewhere else, and they are not at a point where they're ready to go into our new indoor-outdoor temporary shelter, uh, Sam Jones Hall, any of the other emergency shelters around the county, uh, they have that choice. We cannot obligate people to go in, but uh, what they will see is, is more enforcement out there on uh, public properties uh, to make sure that we don't continue to have encampments. Uh, folks have to make a decision ultimately, and, um, and so we're trying to expand the bed space, expand the places where people can go to get into a homeless services area. We're trying to do what's right, but at the same time, we've got to hold ourselves and our community accountable. Uh, third thing out there that I really want to stress is, is that for any of you who know about this issue, care about this issue, whether you're fired up and pissed off or whether you're truly driven by compassion and want to take care of everybody in the world, the reality is, is that we have right now a request for proposals out. Uh, the county is. It's going to close on uh, January 27th. Uh, we're going to keep rolling that as long as we can to try and identify spots. But whether you have a, uh, a private piece of land, uh, whether you're uh, representing a church or another public organization that thinks you want to be a part of delivering a solution, we need help. We need identified pieces of land throughout the county that could be used for the development of short, medium, and long-term shelter space. And primarily what I'm talking about is indoor-outdoor shelters with a navigation center on site, uh, with proper security, with proper intake management, and then also a conduit that allows folks to move from those indoor-outdoor shelters into a system of care. We know that if we can get homeless folks into permanent supportive housing, that those individuals stay at a rate of 95%. 
uh, because I'll, despite what people say about, oh, homeless people just want to live outside, uh, once people are in a functional, stable environment and can start to deal with the issues, the underlying causes for their homelessness, whether it was a family that lost a job or whether it's a significant mental illness, uh, we know that progress can be achieved. Um, there's only one way forward. There's only one solution for homelessness, and that's housing. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me and uh, continue to bring your energy to this dialogue.